Sorry I have to interrupt you, but we do have some breaking news. The Dow breaking a key number here, and we've got to go to the floor of the exchange. We will bring you back uh, very soon, but I want to go now to Susan Lee. Uh, uh, Susan, Dow Jones Industrial Average up almost 500 points, more than 2%. Uh, give us uh, give us the latest on this this leg of this rally today. Okay, so I've been uh, on the phones and talking to a few traders and uh, volatility, of course, part of this game now that we're in this algorithmic program trading world that we are. So yes, we're bouncing back after the those sold down levels that we saw breaking some key technical levels, and people saw that as a bargain, especially a lot of these, as I said, program trades. and said, okay, now it's time to kick in and pick up some of these uh, big tech names in particular. So take a look at the Nasdaq right now. We're driving the gains here with those big tech. Technology names, some of them reporting after hours. That includes Amazon, Alphabet, or better known as Google today. And uh, yeah, that's the talk right now on the trading floor is that uh, we have bargains. The growth story is still intact, and you see a lot of cheap names out there to pick up. Susan Lee, thank you very much. Let's go to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and find out what the traders are talking about down there. Uh Jerry Willis. Yeah, Charles, that's all right. So I'm on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange where the trading is really occurring today. We are up 501 points on the Dow. That's 2%. The S&P 500 up 65 points. That's 2.48%. But take a look at the NASDAQ up 3.4%, 47%. 252 points. This is a big game for the NASDAQ. What are they talking about down here? Well, they're talking about bargain hunting. They're talking about finding stocks that they think are doing very well indeed. It's interesting. Yesterday, stocks were, were getting punished for good news. Today, they're getting uh, trading higher on good news. You see what happened to Microsoft, a good report. They're now up 5%. We're watching Intel. They're going to be reporting uh, soon after the close. That stock doing well. Here's what's leading the Dow higher. Microsoft, Intel, we just talked about them. Visa, Cisco, those stocks at the top. We're also looking at Alphabet, that company we're having already reported. It's done very well. We're waiting for Amazon here. Uh, big news in the earnings. Uh, I got to tell you, the conversation down here is less focused on, say, trade, uh, less focused, say, on the comments coming out of the Fed today. Are we going to get more rate hikes? And more focused on what is that, uh, the, uh, 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 what's going to happen with the uh, election? Uh, in, in less than two weeks, concerns about what happens with Trump's uh, top priorities, what happens with uh, with taxes, what happens with uh, uh, health care. Will he be able to pursue those things, or will it be stopped if the Democrats take the House? Of course, we've been looking at that for some time now, but good news here, the Dow, 494 points to the upside, the S&P up 65, NASDAQ composite up 251, that is a 3.5 percent gain. Coming into today, remember what we saw was that the NASDAQ was in correction territory, right? And we saw that the Dow and the S&P had sold off to the point that all of the gains of the year were wiped out. But this is improving at this point. The question is, will it hold? And what I've been told here on the floor is that they want to see this market finish well above uh, 250 points. That would show some conviction in what's going on in the marketplace right now. It would mean that buyers are really coming in at this point, that they're committed to the market. And that is certainly one of the questions that people are asking. Is this a dead cat bounce or is this real at 500 points? You really got to like it. Back to you, Charles. Thank you very, very much. I want to bring in Kevin Kelly and Mitch Rochelle is back with us. Also joining us from Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Uh, it, to pick up on what Jerry was saying, one of the things I liked about this rally all day is that it's being led by the one, the names who want to lead it. Technology, your top three weightings in technology. Apple's 24, 21% of it. Microsoft, 17%. And Visa is 5%. We know Microsoft and Visa reported. Good numbers, the market's responding well to it, and of course, buyers always see Melissa to flock back into Apple. So you've got leadership there. Intel reports after the close. The semis have been hammered. Maybe you're seeing some bottom fishing there, but you've got the combination of things. You've got the leadership that you need, and you've got some bottom fishing. Is this the right kind of mix for you? Really, tonight and tomorrow are really important for the market. There's two things that's happening in the next 24 hours for the market that are critical. GDP number coming out tomorrow morning and two big tech names reporting tonight, which is Google and Amazon. If one, just one of those two big names reports well and gaps up huge tonight and holds and rallies with a good GDP number tomorrow or both, you could see a massive buying in the market tomorrow and a big rally that could almost 100% retrace the sell-off that we've 
seen for the last two weeks. Now, I don't know if it's going to play out that way, but I'm telling You're you You're saying tomorrow could. one session could be, so almost the biggest yep. session in the history of the stock market, yep. at least from a numerical point of view. I'm telling you that it absolutely could What's happen. What's a good GDP number? I don't know. I, Three point nine percent. More than me. Four percent. No, but you said a good GDP number. Well, that's I, what. I, I tell you, at this point for the market, anything that's not bad is good because we've had so much sell off. So anything close to four, I don't want to say over four, close to four would be good. Mitch. Yeah, and I think on the GDP number, you got to look to the consumer because consumers two thirds or almost seventy percent of GDP, and if the consumer's strong in this print, I think that's going to be the message that the market wants to hear. Here's another thing that I'm seeing. And by the way, I've seen this all week long. I've been amazed every morning at the amount of upgrades. Uh, Wall Street has been very aggressive telling people to buy weakness, which I don't see often. Today, we just got an upgrade on the home builders, the worst, one of the worst hit sec sectors out there. They're doing extraordinarily well. Uh, we just got an upgrade this morning on Caterpillar. We have three upgrades this morning on Boeing. Wall Street is telling, pe telling people to put money to work. I think that's good. In fact, I think it's a little unusual. They usually wait till the top to tell people to buy. Yeah, I mean, we saw last week there were actually downgrades on the home builders. So you're actually seeing uh, different uh, signals coming from Wall Street. But analysts. it sold off a lot since then. Yeah, Valuation I mean, here's, here's all investors need to do. They need to focus on the companies that are reinvesting in their business. And you're seeing that time and time again, whether it's from Home Depot is doing it right. They're spending $1.2 billion to over supply, um, redo their supply chain. Listen, Microsoft last night, their Azure cloud computing was up 76% because companies are reinvesting in their technology. That's the only way the market's going to go higher here. So if we have a short-term correction because margins are compressing, because companies are reinvesting in their business, so be it. But longer term, it's going to play out, and you're seeing it play out with Microsoft Talk today. about the consumer for a moment uh, because, we, you know, you mentioned GDP. Uh, I, I think this week one of the standouts have been retail. They were even the last segment to go down yesterday. They've been holding up. Very, very well. I think people are looking for an, out, uh, an outstanding uh, uh, holiday season. Burlington Code Factory up big today. Children's Place has been up two or three sessions. How critical is it? And do you think that the consumer will step up to the plate? Well, usually you do have retail rallying at the end of the year because Black Friday, the holiday season, is usually the bigger time when you see some of these stocks rally, although some of them rallied and made new highs like Target way earlier this year, which which they didn't have to do and you typically don't do, but they did this year. I think the market's going to close strong in December. I think one of the reasons we've had so much shelling is because we're coming into this election period, and I think that people have been worried about really what's going to happen in the upcoming week, next week and a half, I guess, 10 days till the election. So you've seen that. You see the worry about interest rates. We've had selling. But all the market needs is one reason for people to buy back in. And what, the biggest risk is that people will miss the next rally when, when, whenever that happens, if they, if they sell, if they get out. Well, can I just bring up one of the most important things investors need to be conscientious of? And the biggest buyers of stock have been removed from the market, and that's the companies themselves. They've had a blackout period a month leading into their earnings. So Microsoft now can buy as much stock as they want back now. And then once Amazon does it, so you're seeing the biggest companies can't buy their own stock. And stock buybacks are healthy, right? They are tax-free dividends, essentially. Microsoft, in their report last night, uh, said they spent $6.1 billion uh, returning money to shareholders, either through buybacks and dividends. To your point, a trillion dollars possibly this year. That means hundreds of billions still left in the pipeline. Once that goes off, Mitch, it will have a positive impact on the market. No question. We still have money that's overseas that hasn't been repatriated, and the tax has basically been paid on it. So when that money comes in, it's going to end up in the uh, the capital markets, either through buybacks or through dividends. So I think we're going to see that money come back. Let's talk about Amazon for one second, okay. because that's the name everyone's looking at. Amazon, Alphabet, Google, but Amazon is the one that everyone is paying the most attention to. Uh, it is the, the name that uh, is going to sway everything. Uh, what's the most important part here? Because their guidance is going to be a little different. The $15 minimum wage is going to be a multi-billion dollar hit to them next year, and they do have some other higher costs uh, associated, too. How do you see this playing out? I mean, I, I my instinctively, I'm in it into my retirement account. I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. But do you think they'll overcome those hurdles? Yeah, they're going to overcome those hurdles because one of the highest uh, profit centers for them is going to be advertising going forward. They know your likes, your clicks, and and your habits. So I think the most important thing is is they've been expanding that over the last year, and Wall Street's going to be focused on that number. They know the cloud is going to do well. Their cloud grew 49% last quarter. Expect to beat this quarter on it, given what Microsoft did last night. That's why the stock is trading up today into the earnings over 5%. I really think Google's a one to watch, and here's why. Google has 
not looked that great compared to Amazon in the last few months since July. If Google is a surprise and actually has some buying coming into it tonight, gapping up and running, then you really could see that whole sector, no matter what Amazon does, even if it, even if Amazon So you could down, see Amazon around, down, but Google being the savior? But Amazon could gap down and then rally. What I'm saying is Google has had so much shelling. If buying comes back into that stock, one of the big stocks in that sector that has looked really like crap since July, even though it's in an uptrend, it has, it has had so much shelling compared to Amazon. Amazon's making new highs all the time. It wouldn't be a surprise, is what I'm saying, if Amazon did it. It would be a surprise if Google right. did. You'd have all this buying come back into the stock, and the key number is 1,200. Let's go uh, back to Susan Lee for an update. Susan. Well, you know, I'm going to cover Amazon earnings later on tonight after the bell, and we're expecting profit to gain triple digits, up a few hundred percent from last year. Revenue is also expected to advance about 30 percent or so. And I would say the key number for Amazon, yes, it's always about the cloud because it's probably the main revenue contributor and driver at this point. But what about advertising? That small line last uh, quarter drove up 130 percent, and that's a, a new business line that people are also closely watching as well. In their regular pro their regular business uh, look really fantastic. Cloud gets all of the, uh, to your point, Susan, Cloud gets all of the hype, uh, and it should because it's growing really quickly, and it was the reason they were profitable. But the, the other parts of their business are, are really phenomenal. And by the way, many people really? think they're taking search away from Google right now. Yep, search, advertising, taking away from Facebook and Google. And don't forget, they're getting into pharmaceuticals. They have an Amazon Go bricks and mortar store that just opened up in San Francisco to long lines. That's pretty much the base case everywhere that they open their bricks and mortars, uh, Amazon Go stores right now. So they're doing different things. And when Amazon gets into your space, yes, that is a new 800 pound gorilla. It is an 800-pound gorilla, but I can tell you right now, I've been shaken out of some of the names that initially went down, and a few months later, I kicked myself, whether it was in <laughs> furniture. I mean, so you can compete. Companies can compete, and we talked about retail, but the re even retailers that are learning omni-channel. Yeah. They're learning how to use their brick-and-mortar locations for delivery spots, and even now as distribution hubs. I think we're at the point where retail's finally figured it out. We haven't added new stores on the real estate side. They're closing stores, and they're figuring out how to coexist with e-commerce. What's interesting is we're talking about e-commerce being up, and we're talking about brick-and-mortar, as I like to call stick and brick real estate um, based retail being up. That's all about the consumer, and that's the dividend from tax cuts this late in the, in the calendar. Well, it's important to note that over 95% of retail sales are omni-channel, meaning they're uh, done with retailers that have a physical and a digital presence. The storefront is the gateway to the consumer. You have to have a physical presence in order to increase your retail sales, and that's going to be playing out quarter after quarter after quarter for the retailers. That's why you're seeing Nordstrom do well as well as Walmart. Don't but forget, if Trump comes out with a second tax cut thing before the election comes out, out. That's going to boost sales going into yeah, the end but, of the year. But for still got to keep the house. Uh, real quick, one more time, <laughs> folks. Too, uh, we heard from the second most powerful man at the at the uh, federal Federal Reserve, and there were a few takeaways that I think this market is feeding off. Still room for unemployment rate to drop. Wage growth keeps picking up. The tax cut tailwinds, folks, are still in the economy, and business investment productivity, thanks to the tax code changes, continues. A lot of good things. We got great momentum right now.